let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing, and then that'll kind of set the table for for kind of where I think the the, uh, the industry is. And if I had to give a top a, a name for, uh, for the for my comments today, it would have to be change is not organic. Uh, and I, the, so what, what I've done in the last couple of years is I was, I was Governor Schwarzenegger's chief of staff. Uh, before that, I was his predecessor's cabinet secretary, Governor Davis, during the electricity crisis when we had to keep the lights on in California during our failed attempt at deregulation. And in between those two stints in government, I was uh, put on the Public Utilities Commission. You're all familiar with the duck. Everyone is very painfully familiar with the duck. I've been called the midwife of the duck because <laughs> the, all of the uh, renewable contracts that are coming online uh, between 2013 and 2020 on the, as the belly of the duck are all the contracts that we signed in the last two years of the Schwarzenegger administration. So part of what I did in the Schwarzenegger administration was cut the path to bring on uh, to, to all these you know, renewable projects, and we have now, uh, as a result of that, uh, and some other policies for distributed resources, like the California Solar Initiative and, and other things, we have changed the distribution grid. We are now witnessing the beginning of a massive transition in the distribution grid, a worldwide transition that will not, will not go back in the bottle. We're going one direction, and it's toward distributed resources. What we uh, and so what, when we're looking at the the neck of the duck, we started this company. My colleague and I started this company, Advanced Microgrid. Uh, my colleague is Jackie Fannin-Steele, who some of you may know from the was chair of the Energy Commission in California, and then she went to the Navy and did a lot of the Navy's microgrid and renewable stuff. Well, Jackie and I saw this change in the grid, and it was very clear to us that you cannot solve the problem with the neck of the duck with additional baseload resources. You cannot solve this with a, a peaker plant in downtown Los Angeles. You can't solve it with another thousand megawatt solar field in the desert. So as we are the victims of our own success in that respect, we have changed the distribution grid. Not, now what the, what the CAISO is, is attempting to deal with Instead of having a, uh, a, a baseload resource that is a, a, a knowable amount of, of, of supply dealing with a relatively volatile, uh, uh, you know, a, a knowable uh, uh, demand uh, curve, you now have a very, an intermittent supply and a very volatile demand curve because you've got electrons flowing on different sides of the grid. You've got the, you know, everything is changing on both sides of the balancing equation. And so what you, the technology that is necessary to solve that problem is not one that, we, that comes out of the normal toolkit. And uh, it, what we need for that is fast, flexible resources that are, that, that are not only based at the load center, but also, we believe, harness the load itself as the fastest, cleanest, most flexible resource. So we have this concept. Well, for, we stood there at the crossroad of the, you know, staring at the neck of the duck and said, if we don't figure out how to provide this, these new technologies in order to solve the problem, we're going to end up with a very, very expensive, redundant system of, of spinning reserves just to handle the intermittency. And, well, the, and the, uh, attendant to that will be a lot of stranded costs. And everyone who criticized California for its policies will have been proven right if we don't figure out how to integrate these resources. So we, we, when we started this, we, ha we had the, the concept of taking the, some of the new technologies that are out there and harnessing the building load in a way that has never been done before in order to provide a grid level resource. Now, you, a lot of what uh, companies are doing out there with technologies today, they're battery manufacturers or software manufacturers, they are bringing technologies to market. I view what we're doing as bringing the market to the technologies because we've had batteries that have been around since 1800. Okay, I mean, there's, this is not, we're, we're, we're at a point, the reason we're standing here today with the massive amount of, of change is not because the technology has, has changed so much, it's that because we are, it's out of necessity. We need to utilize a different kind of technology in order to solve the problem. And the, and the nexus point between necessity and affordability is what, is what has opened up the opportunity today. At this point, so for the first time in, 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 in history that, I, that we know of, the regulators gave Southern California Edison much more freedom to figure out how to solve this problem in the LA Basin in a least cost, best fit way. Resulted in the first all resource procurement. And so when, when Southern California Edison did this all resource procurement, we saw that as our opportunity to prove the concept that you could take battery storage combined with advanced software 
harness the, the a building a building's load in the in, in a way that has not been done before aggregate it so that it is a utility facing product in my view, we are, there's a couple, a couple ways to bring new technology to market. You can try to sell it to the end use customer. And a battery, in this case, would be a very expensive energy efficiency tool for an end use customer. It'll never pay for itself. Or you can try to use the technology to create an aggregated product that fits into the distribution level need of the utility. So what we designed was a was a, a product where we took some of their largest end use customers. We came in there with their largest end use customers already in hand. Said if we instead of taking batteries and putting the smallest battery in for arbitrage, let's see if we can harness as much of the building load as we possibly can, and concentrate it into big huge chunks. Our average size installation is half a megawatt. So we're taking big 15 to 18 story commercial office buildings and harnessing half the building load and aggregating that in 20 buildings for one of our 10 megawatt projects. It's a, 10, it's a 20 building hybrid electric building fleet where it's, it, we can uh, literally shift the building to bat all the buildings together uh, to batteries for an hour or four hours at a time so that when I drop 10 megawatts from the grid in this concentrated area, the grid operator is going to see that. If you took 10 megawatts and you spread that across a larger area in small quantities, a grid operator can't even see it. It's not valuable. It's a grid resource when you concentrate it and, give, and make it transparent to the utility and completely firm and dispatchable and controllable by the utility. So that's the way we design these, these projects. The, the, the change will happen, though, when the regulators figure out how, what the market is for these new technologies. Because Edison, Edison just you know, started the change by adopting five times what they, had to, what they were, they were uh, requested to procure, told to procure with energy storage. They went five times beyond that. The biggest danger I see is that regulate, the, the regulatory scheme is dependent upon regulators who really think they're in control. And they, they, regulators are very, very good at starting markets. We can put, you put the right tax structure and the right subsidies and the right mandate in place, and you will attract billions of dollars in investment. That's exactly what happened with solar. We put in, after 30 years of solar policy making, we put in a few billion dollars in, in, uh, in incentive funds, and we, uh, we put in the ITC, and suddenly you, know, you had a market where you were attracting a lot of investment in, in solar. We put in the renewable portfolio standard, the renewable auction mechanism, these other, other mandates, and Suddenly, you have a, a lot of solar that is that is going in, uh, and the prices reflect coming down. Worldwide impact on on, uh, on renewables, bringing the pricing down. Um, we also ended up with 44% reserve margin, and then when San Onofre came offline, we couldn't get the power from all the solar to where the load was. So the mandate itself attracted billions of dollars in investment into the market, but it is it by itself does not transform the market. Regulars are really good at starting markets. We're very, very bad at managing transition to a competitive market. We are now at this at this uh, this entry point into the the era of energy storage, which will transform our electric industry, and the and the regulators have no idea what what success looks like when you get to a competitive market. And the biggest danger is going to be that they don't they are not outcome based, they're not mission based in terms of knowing when to take the break, take the locks off, and let the market work. What does a competitive market look like? What does success look like in terms of attracting new investment? It'll, it could be death by a thousand cuts in terms of opening up that market for investment and new technologies. We're at the beginning of a transformation, we, we, and I believe that it will continue, but the road ahead will be dictated by the regulators.